Hello everyone and welcome back to the Monday Mod Review, for this week at least. Um, now, I'm not exactly excited to do this mod review because you guys are all awful to me. One of you in particular. But I said I would do it because at the beginning of this series, the Monday Mod Reviews, I said one thing, which was, if you have a mod that you'd like to see me review, please tell me. I will do it. And... I will keep that promise. And there's another thing I said. I always read the comments, which I do. And so our dear old friend, Adam, who has helped us with many a horror game, has asked that we review the Creepypasta mod. So I'm not at all excited. For those of you that don't know, what Creepypasta is, is it's basically homemade horror stories. And now they're in Minecraft, thanks to this mod. Now. First off, we'll go over here. This thing, the laptop computer, is going to be... be, 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 be. Ugh. Not again. I can't speak again. Oh, well. Well, actually, for ambiance, let me change this first. There we go. Just for ambiance. And it isn't peaceful, but the scary thing is it doesn't need to be in easy, normal, or hard for this to be horrifying. So this is going to be the basis of everything you do, the laptop computer. Now what you're going to do here is you open it up and you put pa paper right here and then it will turn into a sort of spawn egg. Um, basically you're printing off a creepypasta story. Um, I wish I could show you, but I can't because unfortunately uh, I think mine has a... My, uh, game of it has a bug, so whenever I try to put paper in, it crashes the Minecraft thing. So that is what you do. I'm certain of it. However, I am unable to do it. New weapon sets. We have Jeff's Knife, which is stained with the blood of innocence, but it has plus 15 attack damage. Diamond Sword that I have only has 7, so that's ridiculous. There is no crafting recipe. It is a drop from one of the horrible mobs that we will see. Um, the Hilt of a Blacksmith. There's a village all the way over there, although I didn't, since I didn't have this mod when it spawned, it's not going to be there. But you find the hilt of a blacksmith um, when you go into the blacksmith's area, and they usually have one in their chest. And then the killer's knife is another drop, but it only has plus four attack damage, so it's not really worth it. The hilt of the blacksmith is definitely the best one to go for. Now, new food items. There is actually a new food item, pasta. I mean, obviously, creepy pasta, so we've got that. The recipe for that is just one wheat and a bowl, and that gives you two, actually. So we'll eat that up, and then we just have a bowl at the end. We'll put that back. Um, we actually, for once, have a new record, and I found this very funny because the record is Lavender Town. Yes, everybody, that's right. This is the Lavender Town music from the old Fire Red, Leaf Green Pokemon games. Uh, there, I thought... There we go. Give me that back. There, hopefully the rain and thunder isn't too loud for you guys. I turned the sound down a lot. There, we can just listen to the nice music. Alright, new special items. We only have one. Um, I suppose it could be considered a weapon as well. But, who here is a PewDiePie fan? I'm raising my hand. <laughs> we love PewDiePie. Um, guess who this is? It's Stefano. So yes, we have Stefano. Although I'm going to have to get rid of him because he's dangerous. He explodes. Um, John, what are you doing? He's just hanging around. All right, we're done with this. For those of you that don't know, Lavender Town was like the ghost Pokemon town in the old Pokemons. So that's all, really. Um, that. Oh, wait, no, there's one more thing. I'm not wearing it because we need the diamond armor <laughs> instead as protection. But there is a new armor set for this thing. And it is... It doesn't have a texture as an item, but it's a diaper. It has a texture when it's on me, but that's degrading, so I'm not putting it on. Okay, so back to the mod review. 
So I've gone over everything. Now, you guys know what's next. I have, I have to actually show you these horrible things. Alright, so here we are in here. Now, lots of horrible things up here on these note things. But I think they made, they wanted to make it a little less awful. So what they did is they gave us this beautiful thing. It's PewDiePie! Brofist. Um, I don't really know. He's actually nice, so he can stay here with us. Can't you, Pewds? Yeah, that's right. There, he'll keep us company. What's this thing? I don't know what this thing is. But I think he's good, too, so he can stay. These guys are my friends. Alright, what were they? That's PewDiePie, and that one's like a cryo tick, I think. So there's that, and then we also have the villagers. Oh no, not you. Not you. I forgot, we need more of those. What was it? C. No, not where I wanted to go. There we go, we've got more... Alright, so we can just listen to PewDiePie talk forever. Now, if you, ki if you kill PewDiePie, he drops Stefano, which we saw earlier. So Stefano does not have a cra crafting recipe. You have to kill Pewds for it. Although, what? Oh, hey there, guy. But as you see, you can't actually hurt him. It has to be one of the monsters. Um, the villagers will come into play later, and I don't know what the heck this guy does. He's irritating me, though. Oh, I like this guy right here. All right, so I need to stop being distracted. <laughs> um, here, are, now we need to get into the horrifying monsters. I hate you, Adam, but you're welcome. So now the first one is Eyeless Jack. He will actually come at you while you're sleeping. Oh, wait, no. Maybe we do need to be in... Whoops, I was wrong. We need to be in easy. Blank. There we go. You never saw that. So, this guy right here, Eyeless Jack, he will actually come at you while you're asleep. So, you can he's naturally spawning as well as you can spawn him in from this paper. Get away. Um, but if you do not spawn him in, he will find you anyway while you're sleeping. So isn't that a wonderful thought? But here he is. We've got this. Oh, he's quite beautiful. Now, as you see in the damage indicators, he has 40 health. He's not attacking me. Maybe it's because I haven't attacked him. Oh. Are you going to attack me now? Oh, yes, he is. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Come at me. Come at me. There. Not that scary. Kind of terrifying, actually, but I'm going to say that he's not scary. Now we have Jane the Killer. Hey there. How are you? So, I mean, of course, as soon as you attack her, she will kill you. Then there's also Jeff the Killer, and I... No, Jane, leave PewDiePie alone! Raping. No, PewDiePie! Well, we've got Stefano now. Jane, that's bad. But if you... Oh, crap. Jeez. So Jeff came right at us. But Jane saved us. Thank you. Jane's actually a friend. Just not to PewDiePie's or Jeff, the killer's. Oh, and she drops flowers. Alright, so we like Jane. Um, but we've got Jeff's knife. It's not stained with the blood of innocence because Jane took him down. Alright, what's next? Mothman. We all know Mothman. Oh, well. Don't really know him because. Oh, because his texture's kind of off, but come back here. Well, he's probably just gonna fly there. Yes, we've got him in the corner. Take him down, take him down, take him down. Yes, we destroyed Mothman. 
All right, what's next? I think as an end to this episode, I'm going to read off some of them to you guys. Um, so what's the rake? Oh. Look at that guy over there. Oh, jeez, he's creepy. I don't even want to get close to him. Oh, my gosh. He's so fast, and he... What? Well, he's just having fun. Um, I'm gonna let him go for now. Slenderman. We all know Slenderman. Aw, oh, look at that guy. He's got 100 health. Sounds like an Enderman. Get out of here. So he will hunt you down, mercilessly. Where'd he go? Crap. Oh, he's angry. He's angry. The rake's just over there in the corner. He's like, what the heck is going on? Yeah, see him. He's like, fight, 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 fight. Oh! What? Oh no, the rakes joined the battle. I think. Oh yes, he dropped an ender pearl. Rake, what you doing over there? I thought you were my friend. I don't even think I could kill this guy if I wanted to. He's so fast. Alright, so I'm just gonna drop all this stuff in here. Except Stefano. Stefano needs to stay with us. See, smile dog. So you spawn him in. He's just a normal dog. Until you look him in the eye. Crap. Where is he? Back into a corner so that he can only come at you for one, from one way. Crap, where is this guy? Holy crap, look at all the damage he did. Oh, there's the rake. I need pewds. He's good at horror games. When does this blindness go away? Alright, soon. Three, two, one. There it is. There's the smile dog. Don't look it in the eye. Actually, you know what we need? We need a bow. There, so I'll get a bow, stack of arrows. There we go. Going down. Ah, ha, ha. Villager, what are you doing? You're just, you're just chilling there. Um, how much health does Smile Dog have? He has 50. But if we get close to him, he won't let us get close to him. Basically, if we get close to him, he turns into a monster of sorts. So, unfortunately, I can't get close to him to demonstrate. He won't let me. And jeez, the rake is just... He's flying. He doesn't... He's having... Oh. Well, he killed the villager. He actually did something. Now's our chance. Take him out. Take him out. Take him out. His fun must end. Because this guy's creepy. But I do want to know what his creepypasta story is, so I'll look that up after this. Alright, there we go, he's dead. Now, we've got Squidward. Squidward, what? Well, doesn't really look like Squidward. That's probably a bug. Okay, well that was interesting. Then there's the Strider. These guys friendly. We can ride them. Yes. And then press left shift to dismount. You're cool, buddy. I like you. We'll let him live. And then last but not least, we have the seed eater. Now this guy is horrifying. Um, let me show you what he does. He's supposed to eat the little baby, the babby villagers. I don't think he's gonna do it. What's wrong with you? Oh well. Come on, I need I need to get rid of all these obnoxious testificates now. Well, you're dead. Take that. Killing you two. Killing you two. Now we have to hunt down the babies. Yeah, that's right. Scream. Scream babies. 
Scream baby testificates. <laughs> oh my gosh, we've become our own creepy pasta story. It's kind of terrifying to think of, but we just murdered the scariest things as well as a whole group of villagers and baby villagers. So we need to be put in this mod. Wonderful. I need to see a creepypasta archive called Quint Studios. So yeah, everybody, that's the end of this mod review. Yeah, I almost just said mod. Um, I'm sure you can have a lot of fun. And by fun, I mean um, terrifying moments with this mod. But I'm just going to uh, read you the stories now from online. Sorry, I was thinking of other things. Okay, so I'm gonna go online, so we're gonna say goodbye to John, and I'll read, like, a couple stories. Because why not? Bye, John! Okay, so let's look at this. I'm on Creepypasta Wiki. Um, and we'll see. First one I looked up was The Rake. Um, during the summer of 2003, events in the northeastern United States involving a strange Wait, the Northeastern United States. Crap. Involving a strange human-like creature with sparks which spark the men out you know that. Which sparked brief local media interest before an apparent blackout was enacted. Little or no information was left intact, as most online and written accounts of the creature were, were mysteriously destroyed. Primarily focused in rural New York State and once, in, once found in Idaho, self-proclaimed witnesses told stories of their encounters with a creature of unknown origin. Emotions ranged from extremely trauma traumatic levels of fright and, discomf and discomfort to an almost childlike sense of playfulness and curiosity. While their published versions are no longer on record, the memories remained powerful. Several of the involved parties began looking for answers that year. In early 2006, the collaboration had accumulated nearly two dozen documents dating between the 12th century and present day, spanning four continents. In almost all cases, the stories were identical. I, I've been in contact with a member of this group and was able to get some excerpts from their upcoming book. A suicide note, 1964. Wait, sorry, I don't think that was cheerful enough. A suicide note, 1964. As I prepare to take my life, I feel it necessary to... I don't know that word. That's rare. I almost always know words. A sewage, any guilt or pain I have introduced this act. It is not the fault of anyone other than him. For once I awoke and felt his presence. And once I awoke and saw his form. Once again I awoke and heard his voice. And looked into his eyes. I cannot sleep without fear of what I might next awake to experience. I cannot ever wake. Goodbye. <laughs> Found in the same wooden box were two empty envelopes addressed to William and Rose and one loose personal letter with no envelope. Dear Linny, uh, I have prayed for you. He spoke your name. That thing doesn't really look like it would speak, but whatever. A journal entry translated from Spanish, 1880. I have experienced the greatest terror. I have experienced the greatest terror. I have experienced the greatest terror. I see his eyes when I close mine. They are hollow, black. They saw me and pierced me. His wet hand, I will not sleep. His voice, unintelligible text. So it probably sounded like... Okay. Uh, okay. Let's skip the Mariner's Log. Um, so, let's see here. From a witness in 2006. Three years ago, I had just returned from a trip from Niagara Falls with my family for the 4th of July. We were all very exhausted after a long day of driving, so my husband and I put the kids right to bed and called it a night. At about 4 a.m., I woke up thinking my husband had gotten up to use the restroom. I used the moment to steal back the sheets, only to wake him up in the, wake him in the process. I apologized and told him I thought he got out of bed. When he turned to face me, he gasped and pulled his feet up from the end of the bed so quickly his knee almost knocked me out of the bed. He then grabbed me and said nothing. After adjusting to the dark for half a second, I was able to see what caused the strange reaction. At the foot of the bed, sitting and facing away from us, there was what appeared to be a naked man. That's hot. Or a large hairless dog of some sort. That's hot. Its body position was disturbing and unnatural, as if it had been hit by a car or something. That's hot. 
<laughs> For some reason, I was not instantly frightened by it, but more concerned as to its condition. Well, yeah, if it had been hit by a car, then that would probably be something concerning. Well, especially if it's still alive. At this point, I was somewhere under the assumption that we were supposed to help him. My husband was peering over his arm and knee, tucked into the fetal position, occasionally glancing at me before returning to the creature. In a flurry of motion, the creature scrambled around the side of the bed and then crawled quickly in a flailing sort of motion right along the bed until it was less than a foot from my husband's face. The creature was completely silent for about 30 seconds, or probably closer to five. It just seemed like a while. Just looking at my husband... The creature then placed its hand on his knee and ran into the hallway, leading to the kids' rooms. I screamed and ran for the light switch, planning to stop him before he hurt my children. When I got to the hallway, the light from the bedroom was enough to see it crouching and hunched over about 20 feet away. He turned around and looked directly at me. Covered in blood, I flipped the switch on the wall and saw my daughter, Clara. No, Clara Oswald! No! Now he'll say now who will save the doctor? The creature ran down the stairs while my husband and I rushed to help our daughter. She was very badly injured and spoke only once more in her short life. She said he is the rake. Beautiful. Um I don't know if any I'm just scanning everything else. I don't think it's anything. important uh, oh okay there is more important things um, they basically figured out that he could come again I set up a digital digital recorder near my bed and left it running all night every night for two weeks I would tediously scan through the sounds of me rolling around in my bed each day when I woke up. By the end of the second week, I was quite used to the occasional sound of sleep while blurring through the record at eight times the normal speed. This still took almost an hour every day. On the first day of the third week, I thought I heard something different. What I found was a shrill voice. It was the rake. I can't listen to it long enough to even begin to transcribe it. I haven't let anyone listen to it yet. All I know is that I've heard it before, and I now believe that it spoke when it was sitting in front of my husband. I don't remember hearing it, anything at the time, but for some reason, the voice on the recorder immediately brings me back to that moment. The thoughts that must have gone through my daughter's head make me very upset. I have not seen the rake since he ruined my life, but I know that he has been in my room while I slept. I know and fear that one night I'll wake up to see him staring at me. Cool. So now, just for you, for the viewer's sake, half of you, I know, are just fine with this. And the other half of you, I know, are paranoid freaks. So trust me, like I said, these are homemade horror stories. None of them are real. Um, so is there one more that we wanted to look up? Sure, let's try the Seed Eater. Alright, here we are back on Creepypasta Wiki. Wiki, except it's with the Seed Eater. I wish he would have stayed. Dear Reader. What? Why is everything crossed out? Okay. Um, this here it is. The seed eater is a disturbed bird slash human creature that roams in the forest, stalking children. Well, Father Jabo does that, abducting them to be part of the legend. On June 19, 19, 1987, I saw it sitting in my tree on my front lawn. I was in a daze when I saw it. My destiny beckoned to me, and it said, Follow it. Love it. Learn it. My what was that? You have no idea how high I just jumped. <laughs> I'm not scared. I swear I'm not. But that quick noise and the creepypasta story just freaked me out. Oh, okay. Um, around the same time, <laughs> two weeks later, I awoke to a strange tapping noise on my front window. I knew it was him. I ran out of the house to see that sitting in the tree, just staring into my eyes. I was about to cry from the majesty of it. I remember it telling me that I, it wanted my help. I would do anything for it. Jeez, this guy's insane. On some random date at some point, why can't I scroll? Hello? Okay, whatever. It won't let me scroll for some reason. 
Oh, shut up. Leave me to read my creepy pastas. Um, it on some insignificant date, the seed eater arrived at my window again. I was overjoyed. It, oh, leave me alone. It said that it was time, and I remember. You see, the seed eater devours children to keep itself alive, indulging in their youth to live forever. I remember the little boy. Oh, what was his name? Oh, well, it doesn't matter. Wait, that was his son, wasn't it? Ah, well, this guy's insane. I remember going to his house and just simply knocking on the door at 4.29 a.m., but nobody would answer. I saw the bay window. It was the boys' room. I went to tell the seed eater. Let's just call him S slash E for now. He told me how to get his attention the next day. A couple of weeks went by, and the stench of the flesh was getting disgusting. Where was S. E.? The parents of the boy put up lost posters last week. I wonder why they didn't worry for the first two weeks. Oh well, I'm not concerned. On another insignificant date, the boy was nothing but bloated, rotting flesh, and the S. E. was nowhere to be found. I guess my services weren't needed. He came, he took the body, and requested another. Six kids killed, six kids devoured, six more requested. However, losing people makes me wonder. Help me. The killer monster seed eater came tonight. He said kids weren't doing the trick anymore. He wanted something bigger. If you're reading this, you may be the only hope to finding out the truth of this thing. In my room, there is a journal. On page 49, you'll discover how to take the life of this monster. But he's had me under a tight death grip. I couldn't do it. But maybe you'll have more strength than me. Goodbye, everybody. I hope being eaten is what I brought on to myself. All right. Well, you probably did. I mean, you're kind of crazy. All right, everybody. So that's been the Creepypasta Mod Review with thanks to Creepypasta Wiki for actually helping us read the stories of some of these creepy homemade legends. Now, everybody, I hope you all enjoyed this episode. Leave a like and subscribe, and I will see you all next time. Goodbye.